This bike blew me out of the water right away. I thought I was getting on another dud trail bike and boy was I wrong. The Trek Fuel is a radically new style of trail bike. It only has 140 millimeters of rear wheel travel, but the front head angle is 64 degrees. Some enduro bikes still only come with a 64 degree head angle. This makes it super aggressive in the front, kind of party out back. The bike we're looking at here, the build kit is 9.7. 9.7 is one up from the base model. It comes with a Fox 36 rhythm, a Fox Float X. Pretty good shock, it's got a piggyback. We'll talk about that shock later. Got Shimano four piston SLX brakes. You know, these are plenty good parts to do some pretty rowdy riding. The 9.7 comes in, give or take $7,500. Considering the parts it comes with in its carbon frame, it's a really good value if you compare it to other bikes. But I know 7,500 is a ton of money for a bicycle. Like, when, when did, did we, we start, start having, having to finance, finance bicycles? bicycles? For a reference point, I would consider myself an average rider, maybe a little bit above. I'm a big guy, I'm 190 centimeters. And if you're Imperial like me, that's six foot three. Let's go ride it. For a 140 millimeter trail bike with 29 inch wheels, this bike jumps fantastic. There is a big issue in the rear end, but we're gonna have to talk about that later. The Trek fuel is not particularly fast and it's not particularly good at carrying speed, but it is a standout in the fun department. The front end lifts up super easy, and it's a pretty decent bunny hopper. The bike is pretty good at jibbing. If you're not familiar with jibbing is, it's basically kind of like dancing, swerving down the trail. I'm a surfer at heart, so I'm always surfing down the trail. This bike is a really standout all-arounder. I mean, yeah, every bike can do all this stuff, but you're not gonna have as much fun as you are on this bike because it's lightweight, but it's got the power to get you moving. This was my first time riding the Trek suspension platform. It's called Active Braking Pivot. If you're not familiar with the suspension, it basically can separate the braking forces from the suspension. I wasn't pounding on the brakes on a crazy downhill line, so I didn't really experience it. But if I was to compare the suspension to something else, it would be somewhere between Specialized and Santa Cruz. The suspension is a really nice balance between poppy and plush. All Trek Fuel EXE bikes come with a 360 watt battery. That is a pretty small battery to be fair. The TQ motor puts out 50 Newton meters of torque in the middle of the road for lightweight e-bikes. The battery comes out very easy, unlike a lot of lightweight e-bikes. And the motor is so quiet. Like, who doesn't like a quiet bike? My logic has always been, if you're gonna get a complicated bike with a motor, go big. But this bike kind of changed my mind. First thoughts here riding the bike, the motor is like nothing I've ever ridden. The assistance from the TQ motor is very unique. It feels like a tailwind because there's basically no noise coming out of the bike. I put a microphone on the motor. Let's listen to it. So I'm gonna put the microphone down on the motor and go hit a bunch of jump lines and climb and see if there's any noise out of this bike because it's been the ghost whisperer so far. Microphone on the bottle case. This is what the motor sounds like at full assistance. This is what the motor really sounds like with the microphone next to my ear. So I'm in turbo mode here on the bike path and the battery's getting juiced super quick. 
So I pop it down into trail mode and there's really not that much of a difference between turbo and trail. And then I go down to eco and there's barely a difference between trail and eco. I really like that the assistance levels are very close to each other because I'm not trying to get high on turbo. I got about 15 miles of range on this bike on flat trails, which is super impressive for the battery size. I wasn't able to test it on the vertical for 15 miles on flat trails. That's really good for a 360 watt battery. The simpleness of the screen is great. There's no learning curve up here on the down tube when you're adjusting the power modes. Three modes, super simple. It's funny because this is a Trek bike and the controller over here on the left is super clean and works great, unlike the rail. The 9.7 has great parts and you don't need to change anything to get shredding. The Float X on this bike feels like a brick. One of two things, it's got a bad tune or it's a defective shock. I'm saying it's a defective tune because I rode a Fox Float X with the RX tune and it felt fantastic. If you're having the same issue, let me know because I'm really curious if this shock's defective or it's just the bad tune. The shock size on this bike is 20560 trunnion mount. Rob Ride's EMTB is running a 205-65 rear shock. He says that brings the travel to 152 millimeters on the rear. That is a huge bump from 140. You risk interference issues by overstroking your bike that much, so be really careful overstroking. Personally, I would feel way safer running a 2.5 millimeter longer shock. Okay, the bike felt great with the 160 millimeter Zeb up there on the front. 64 degrees with the 160 millimeter Zeb. And realistically, the Zeb is over forking this bike. I love the 36. I think it's my absolute favorite fork. Quick note here, these shorter travel trail bikes do benefit from a more expensive damper. Like on my long travel stuff, I do not need a fancy damper. But with this short travel fork, it really benefits. Of course, the Bontrager stuff isn't great. It's got thin wall tires, but the Bontrager stuff does get the job done. If you're not super picky, it's just fine. I don't think this is the best bike for heavy riders. Like as we look at Trek's website right there, it says do not exceed 300 pounds. So me at 220 pounds plus a 48 pound bike, I'm factoring in putting downhill tires on it. I am 30 pounds from the max weight limit. That tells me the frame isn't super strong on this bike. So if you're a big guy, I really don't think this is the best choice. On the opposite end of the big spectrum, I don't like to see size small bikes have a 29er in the rear because come on, people riding a size small aren't gonna have super long legs. The Trek Fuel EXE is the quietest bike. It's super fun and playful. The parts choice is pretty damn good. Simply put, this is an exceptionally sharp Swiss Army knife. 